Hey everyone, you're tuned in to Let's Talk Trans. I'm your host, Gabriel. Here we sit down and we talk about the topics, political, social, mental, and physical. This way you don't have to feel like you're facing anything alone. Are you ready for this episode of Let's Talk Trans? Me too. Let's get started. Hey, that was me. How'd you think of the new, uh, or what'd you think of the, the new intro? You don't even want to know how long it took me to do that. There were sticky notes everywhere. Um, I even tried using IA uh, for the voiceover instead of my own, and I just couldn't get behind it. Ugh. I know, technology. Anyway, so this episode of Let's Talk Trans, like we said on the website, um, or the Facebook page, we should do a website. I should have a website, shouldn't I? Uh, we gotta talk about some health issues. So, we've had a scare. There's no we. I had a scare. I'm still having a scare. I'm scared. It's scary. Oh no. Okay. I can't, I shouldn't make light of it. It's not, it's serious. Okay. Uh, so we'll talk about that. Bring up a couple of um, support pages, of course, for all of us. And just kind of chillax a little bit. Make it a short podcast, maybe. Who knows? I might go on a rant. You never know. So anyway, um, for those of you in the United States, happy 4th of July. And for everybody not in the United States, um, when your Independence Day comes up, I hope you have a wonderful one. So for those of you not in the United States who who don't um, know why I just said happy 4th of July, like big freaking deal, uh, in 1776, the United States declared its independence from uh, King George and Great Britain, and thus throwing uh, the two countries, well, the country and the colony at war with one another, and we would eventually win our independence. But it, and that was that was a whole, like I said, 1776, a long time ago. And it doesn't matter because we're still really good friends with the, the UK and most of the world, I think. Most of the world. We won't go there. Uh, but I hope everybody had a, a fabulous Father's Day. And um, I went to... Like I said, I went to uh, our Pride Fest, and I went in my free dad hug shirt, which I had bought right after Pride Fest last year, and I was like, that's it. I'm saving it. I'm going to wear it next year, and my whole goal was to find someone with a free mom hug shirt, and not only did I find somebody, but I actually found an organization called freemomhugs.org. And it was really, really cool. Uh, I, I friended them on Facebook, and what they do is they, they this organization, they make sure that somebody is at an event so that there's always someone who will dish out a free mom hug or a free dad hug. And it was really cool. Um, I did join up, so we'll see if I go to any events, which would kind of be cool, but we won't go there. So anyhow, that was that. And then this is this. So... I'm going to go backwards to Father's Day. All right. I um, I had a diabetic episode. My blood sugar dropped um, dangerously low. It was, it was not a good number. And I am not – I was not um, diabetic at the time. I'm, I'm still not technically classified as diabetic. I am classified as pre-diabetic, although I kind of expect that number to change here or that information to change. So I was at my mother's house with my sister. My mom's an EMT. My sister's a nurse. Uh, so it wasn't like I wasn't in good company when it happened. Uh, I, was, I was not able to articulate very well. I was not able to communicate what was going on. Um, it felt like my body was shaking. It was funny. It wasn't funny. Uh, it was a unique feeling. Um, I, it felt like, like I had tremors. Like, my hand, like I kept looking down at my hand expecting that my hands were shaking, but they weren't. But internally... Um, and my sister told me it was kind of like a car engine. I was, I was trying to pump insulin that wasn't there. And, uh, you know, we took my blood sugar, found out the numbers. Uh, my sister looked at me and goes, I'm hungry. I'm going to have a ham sandwich. Would you like a ham sandwich? And I'm like, I just nodded. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I need it. I need something. And, uh, a ham sandwich and a Gatorade and about a half hour later, and I was, I was all right. But, uh, it was, it was scary. 
I'd had a couple of them before. I didn't really realize what they were. Um, and I'd always, I'd been alone. Uh, this was the first time where I was actually around somebody who could identify what it was. And so I reached out to, like, like a, 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 a responsible adult, I reached out to my healthcare provider. And my healthcare provider seemed a little like, eh, okay, well, let, let's do some labs and we'll see what, what comes from it. You know, and one episode, you may, you know, maybe you forgot to eat or you just, you know, got busy or, or whatever have you. And I went, okay, let's do some labs. Famous last words. So the labs showed my A1C is high, which means I'm pretty much diabetic. And, um, my cholesterol was horrible. So my good cholesterol, which you can, should be high, was low. Um, and my bad cholesterol, which should be low, was high. Bad cholesterol. So the thing of it is, for those of you who don't know how cholesterol works or why cholesterol works or why people go, oh, cholesterol. Um, cholesterol is for lack of a, a better term, bad cholesterol can clog your arteries. It gets kind of thick and gunky and it makes the inside of your arteries a little hard and can also block them up, causing heart attacks. Good cholesterol, um, the way that it was explained to me is almost kind of like a, a lube, a lubricant for the, the blood and it keeps that bad stuff off the, off the walls of the, the arteries and off the walls of your veins and, and so on and so forth. So... Uh, the good news is is that both n neither of which are um, I don't say not life threatening because they are if I don't pay attention to it, but the thing is they're reversible. So it's something that I have control over, um, just like my blood sugar. So as long as I'm paying attention and, and eating healthy and doing right by my body, I'm all right. Now, the thing of it is is I've never been a big or I've never been a little person. I was a little person when I was, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13. I became a teenager and turned into a bigger person. Uh, the service didn't help it, and neither did life. You know, PTSD, depression, you know, the whole nine yards. Marriage, divorce, life, you know, just life. COVID added to it. Um, and then the thing of it is, is that then I, you know, I, I jump on... HRT, all right, I go on to hormone replacement therapy with testosterone almost two years ago now. And you get, you know, the whole list of side effects, and you're like, yeah, that'll never happen to me. Ha, <laughs> male pattern baldness. Yeah, no way. And then, guess what? <laughs> yeah. Um, both uh, type 2 diabetes and bad cholesterol are part or are a side effect of testosterone therapy, hormone replacement hormone therapy um complications include acne weight gain male pollen bat or male pattern baldness sleep apnea uh risk in high cholesterol high blood pressure um so the thing of it is is that while my body while i was doing this to my body a long time ago like I, i've definitely treated my body like an amusement park um so i i kind of set myself up for this one but then coming out and deciding to go on hormone therapy uh, made it worse or, or at least brought the conditions. All right, that's not the right word. Let me see. Rapidly intensified a pre-existing condition. How's that? So what was already there and was already brewing, HRT just kind of made it happen faster. Here's the, up, here's the, and I'm, a, I'm always – I'm neither a glass half empty nor a glass half full person. I, I kind of like to see both sides of the spectrum. So the, the pro and con. At least I found out about it now in my early 40s when I'm still young enough and healthy enough to do something about it. I can reverse these effects. This is not – you know, I, I'm not in my 60s or 70s and going, frick, I'm doomed. Um on the other hand, I like on a glass half empty side is I want to slap myself because guess what? I did this to myself. Um, not the HRT did this to myself. Okay. 
So for anybody who is listening, and I, there may or may not be people who listen to us or listen to the podcast and go, see, God did this to you. No, God didn't do this to me. This is not punishment in any way, shape, or form. You know who did this to me? Ow! Oh, I hit myself on the sutures. <laughs> I did this to me. I hit myself in my chest. Oh, no, I don't have sunburn. Oh, cheese and rice. Two months and it still hurts. Um... I did this to me. Uh, soda, popcorn, junk food, fast food, lethargic behavior, sitting at my computer, while, you know, sitting, not going out bike riding, not playing football, not, not walking every night with the dogs. I did this to me. All right. And yes, yeah, some of it's a pre existing, you know, yes, I have a, a one big parent or one bigger parent, one smaller parent. So yeah, some of it's a little genetic, but some of it's not. I wasn't born a big kid. Again, I was a very active youth. So this is on me. So that being said, um, I am going to work at it. Um, I, I, I've reached out to all the appropriate doctors. Um, my primary at the VA and I are, are talking about it. My primary outside of the VA are talking about it. My endocrinologist and I are watching the numbers. And uh, my psychologist and I are talking about food addiction. Now, this is one of those things that I wanted to talk about. Um, because while it's a, a, a very U.S. thing or a very United States type thing, um, I, there's still a level of it in every country or most countries. So here in the U.S., 42% of Americans, 42% of American adults are obese. Um, so – and then there's another 30% that are overweight. Now, some of you are, well, what's the difference? Well – for people who are – let's see. The, the difference between overweight and obese, that's always a good question because I didn't look that one up. I don't even know why I brought it up. But naturally, I'll look it up for you. So the difference between overweight and obese is not a number thing. So it's not like, oh, a person weighs this amount of weight. It's they're obese or they weigh this amount of weight, you know, pounds or kilograms or stones or however we weigh ourselves. Um, it comes down to what they call BMI or your um, – body mass index and yes that's a that's a a number but it's not again it's not like pounds or it comes down to how much fat your body has on you based on your height based on measurements um, it's actually a, a, a science and i like science i love numbers and sciences it, it just it's always been one of those things for me so um there are five categories there's underweight normal overweight obese and extreme obesity so um, if you have 30 to 34 uh, percent or 30 to a 35 BMI, which means basically like 35 percent of your body weight is fat, you're obese. If it's 25 to 30 or 20, I'm sorry, 25 to 29, 20, no, 25 to 30, I'm sorry, then you're overweight. So the thing of it is, is that the majority of Americans are either overweight or in that obese category. Um, eleven percent are type two diabetic. So here in this country, and, and I, I've heard it referred to a couple of times as first world issues. We have a first world issue. Our first world issue is, is that we have access to fast food, we have access to junk food, and we have no concept how to control ourselves on that. I'm guilty of that. I'm absolutely guilty of that. Um, it is so easy for me to get out of work and stop at McDonald's or stop at Burger King or Taco Bell or, or wherever and grab a sandwich on my way home so that when I get home, I can instantly start doing whatever it is that I need to do, whether it's the podcast, photography, um, prepping things for the kids, working with the dogs, working in the yard. It's so much easier for me to grab that junk food and then do that than it is to come home and make a meal, make a healthy meal. Because there's a difference between a healthy meal and just, you know, hot dogs and french fries in the deep fryer. Yeah. And I know, you know, we have air fryers. But the thing of it is, is that that's not – an air fryer is like marginally better. But it's like the difference – for me, in my opinion, it's the difference between butter and margarine. Yeah. Um, so like I said, here in the United States, we have this huge, huge problem and – this particular problem, especially, again, for me, facilitated 
my diabetes and facilitated the bad cholesterol. Now, I said I was talking to a psychologist. Um, I reached out to a psychologist, same psychologist I came out to two years ago. Now, we stayed in touch, you know, through my, my surgeries and my, my journey. And I said, hey, look, I think I have a food addiction. And I need to know how to break this habit. How do I break, how do I get rid of soda? How do I, how do I break the habit? And she said, this is fabulous. You know, let's schedule an appointment. We'll talk about this. And because she's like, this is what we do. And I'm all for it. Now, the thing of it is, is, you know, if you have ever talked to friends about addictions or whatever have you, any of you have ever suffered an addiction, um, and it doesn't have to be a, 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 an illegal addiction. It doesn't have to be, you know, a drugs or alcohol. Um, there are so many variances of addiction out there. There's sex addiction. There's shopping addiction. There's food addiction. You don't think for a second that, you know, any one addiction is better or worse. You know what I mean? Don't think that, you know, oh, Gabe's saying he's addicted to soda. Boo-hoo. Well, guess what? You know, so to, it, if I don't break this addiction, it's going to kill me. It, it's not a matter of, you know, it's just like a, um, a shopping addiction, shopping for shoes. Well, if you can't control your addiction for that, that, that brand new pair of sneaks or that brand new pair of Jordans or that brand new boots or the Prada purse or whatever have you, you pay so much money for those things you're willing to overlook the bills. You're willing to overlook the groceries. You're willing to overlook the mortgage. And the next thing you know, you're homeless. Who gives a sugar if you ha- – I almost said the wrong word. Who gives a sugar if you have Prada or um, Jordans if you're living in a cardboard box? You know what I mean? And that's the thing. I mean like addictions regardless can lead everywhere. I know someone who has one of these addictions or, or had an addiction – and he was a, a police officer in our community. Um, he was beloved, I mean absolutely beloved by the kids in our community. He taught martial arts and it turned out that he was uh, an addict. And it destroyed, not only did it destroy him and his family, but it destroyed the, the kids that looked up to him, the community that it looked up to him. Um, and like I said, it wasn't an illegal addiction, but it was an addiction nonetheless. And the problem was that that addiction took him in an illegal path. And he's now sitting comfortably behind bars or uncomfortably behind bars. And yes and no, I'm off topic. I, I'm not, but I am. But the thing of it is, is that it's not just, oh, it's soda, get off of it. Oh, it's soda. Quit drinking it. Oh my God, I used to drink soda. I haven't had soda. For- yes, I understand all of those. I do. I, I've heard them. I, I can't tell you how many times I've heard them. But you know what? I, I also hear. I hear people who are smoking or vaping, going, "Oh yeah, man, I quit soda years ago," and they're got that chemical that they're breathing in. And I'm like, "Well, what about that?" Oh, I don't need to give this up. See, um, or. You know, I gave up soda a long time ago, but you know, uh, I had to substitute it with something else. I substituted it with potato chips, or I substituted it with iced tea. Well, now I've got kidney stones because I'm slugging down so much iced tea. It's you know, it's it's the devil in this hand and the devil in that hand, for lack of a better term, or what is it, the devil you know versus the devil you don't mentality. So the thing of it is, is I'm going about it from a psychological standpoint. I'm going about it through. Um, a means of which I'm hoping um, a person who is way more skilled at this than I am can help me break an addiction. And I fully expect that once we have that conversation that that addiction will be like every other addiction I've ever seen or or heard about. That is that, you know, um, don't touch it, don't look at it, you're going to always want it. There's no, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, don't have it in the house type mentality. Or you will fall back on it, which scares me. Um, what I'm, what I'm hoping, and one of the things that I, I I get from this, and the upside of this again, that glass half empty, half full mentality, is is that I want to know is once I get off the soda, once once I do this, once I, once I start in that direction, that positive direction, 
am I going to lose weight like a man because I have testosterone and I have no estrogen in my system? Or am I going to still lose weight like a woman? Being that, you know, genetically I am still predispositioned as a female. Uh, and the cool thing is, is when I talk to my doctors about that, they're all like, yeah, we don't know either. Uh, it, again, it, one of the things that I absolutely love is, um, for those of you who don't know, maybe you've, you haven't listened or, or you haven't listened long enough, uh, I'm a teacher. I teach history and I teach science. I truly, truly love the science behind this. And I love, in some cases, being the guinea pig. Uh, this is one of those times where I'm going to be a guinea pig we're going to find out whether or not I lose weight like a man, which means that taking away the soda will, uh, you know, it'll fall off. Or am I going to struggle with it, you know, and I'm still going to have issues. So we'll, we'll see what happens. It's fun because, again, when the doctors don't know and you don't know, there's only one thing to do. You document everything. You document it all. And you check and you, you you know what I mean? Like, again, I become the human guinea pig. And I like that. I always like being the guinea pig. I don't know why. It's kind of like experimenting on myself because I won't let anybody else do it. But those are the things, like I said, those are the things that we wanted to talk about. So, it, like I said, in my field, I'm, I'm truly blessed. I'm truly, truly blessed. One, I, I live in a state where um, being transgender or being a person who is transitioning is not hindered by my government. Or is not hindered by my state government or my commonwealth government because I live in a commonwealth. Uh, I, I'm truly fortunate in the regard that not only do I have a job where my insurance covers things like top surgery, uh, but I also have um, access to the VA. For those of you who don't know what a VA is, it's Veterans Affairs. That means that I served in the military. I have access to these benefits because of my service time where I can have a hospital that is designated for veterans. When I, um, I have a primary, I have a, I, both an outside primary and a VA primary, and they talk, you know, the, the information is shared back and forth. And the, the beauty of it is, is, you know, the VA covers my hormone therapy. Um, the VA, that, and it's, it's no charge to me. I don't have to sweat it. I don't have to worry about, you know, the VA... Um, you know, charging me for it. That it's that's one of, like I said one of those those benefits. Um, I found out I, again at, at our Pride Fest. Oh my God! About a week ago, I think it was that my VA had a LGBTQ uh, veteran care coordinator, which I didn't even realize we had a veteran care coordinator. But if you have access to your VA, and uh, if you're a veteran. Whether it's a veteran of the United States or a veteran in another country, I would suggest that you know perhaps you take a look and consider these things. Um, our veterans, our organization, our RVA offers um, individual and couples group mental health care, uh, hormone. So they basically offer therapy, hormone replacement therapy, free operation psychological evaluations for transgender vets. This means that. My psyche valve could have been covered by the VA. Now it was, you know, we did all the, the evaluations and everything outside and it was covered anyway. But for somebody who perhaps doesn't have a insurance like mine or doesn't have insurance at all, the VA is there for them. All right. Empowerment and psychoeducational groups. Again, counseling. Voice feminization and masculinization therapy. Voice coaching. I did not realize that the VA actually offers voice coaching and covers voice coaching. Um, I wish I would have known about these services a while ago. I really, truly would love to have been able to share this with some people. But, and the, the beauty of it is that they give you this little flyer, and I, I, I've got it here. It's very, like I said, it, it's it's very nice. It's very simple. It's you know got some information on it, but they they tell you point blank, you know, and this applies in either way. Um, if I come out to my provider, will my benefits be taken away? Um, and the, here's the thing. If you come out to your provider, okay, whether you come out to a civilian provider or a VA provider, unless you are a minor, okay, here in, in, in PA it's 14, that's 
doctor pl- doctor patient privilege okay they can't tell anybody right and the thing of it is is your doctors need to know your your doctors can't treat you effectively if they don't know what's going on with you psychologically physiologically and physically uh, you'll notice i didn't say metaphysically we won't go there all right but the thing of it is is if my doctors didn't know that i was on hrt let's say i was getting it from an outside source would they have any clue that the cholesterol and the diabetes were in part due to my testosterone levels no now in the same breath uh, they are they are suggesting that i um calm or i go they want me to go bi-weekly on my testosterone see if that helps any but in the same breath by doing that i stay off other medications okay the thing of it is is that again your your doctor you should be comfortable with your doctor if you're not comfortable with your doctor there's a problem okay the other thing is is that there are a plethora i love that word plethora there are a plethora of options out there for medical psychological and again physiological care if you need it and are terrified that a primary is going to say something to someone um you can use it. the trevor project there are oh my god there's it, there's it's called the advocacy this is primarily for youth okay so this is called the advocacy and support organizations for the lgbtq okay um it comes off of child welfare information gateway.com dot gov okay it's a coalition uh is a national movement of children youth and adults with one or more lesbian gay bisexual transgender or queer parents Okay, so it's it's for it's to help. You know, you have the human rights campaign as always. NAMI. Okay, I hope I pronounced that right. National Alliance for Mental Illness. Okay, NAMI. They're they're out there. All right. Don't don't think for a second that they're not. Okay. Um there's AFSP. Okay, the LGBTQ Crisis and Support Resources. GLAD, all right? LGBT Foundation, okay. Um, American Civil Liberties Union, of course, is out there. There's, and I, I know this. You know, I know full well that if you go on to Facebook, you'll find support groups that love to talk. I share the podcast and a lot of them. That's probably how some of y'all found me. You're more than welcome to vent, okay. You you're more than welcome to vent here. You can you know DM me on the the, the, the Facebook page anytime. I'll listen to you. We can talk back and forth. Uh, the thing it is, like I said, it's your mental health and your physical health go hand in hand. Okay, if you're mentally not in a good headspace, you're physically can't be, because the stress of the mental well being weighs on the body. If your body is not in a good place, okay, you suffer mentally from fatigue, exhaustion, depression. You know what I mean? Like they go hand in hand. One can't be good without the other and vice versa and and there's going to be a couple people out there who go hey i'm a bodybuilder and i look hot you might look fabulous on the outside but that doesn't mean that every organ is doing what it's supposed to do at 100 percent. all right don't even go there you know there's a supermodel going i look fabulous maybe not a supermodel okay but you know what i mean i mean they, they they go hand in hand it all goes hand in hand that being said all right reach out you know if if you're ever afraid that you don't know where to turn all right we we put these uh we put these groups we put a couple of them on the facebook page i'll i'll repost them but if you, you ever need someone to turn you want to talk like i said our our facebook page is there i'm pretty quick about getting back to it uh i'm not a psychologist in any way shape or the imagination i'm a teacher i have a teacher's ear all right, so that means that I will listen. I have empathy. Uh, I will try and help to the best of my ability. I will try and help get you in the right direction. I am, like I said, not a doctor, not a psychologist, not a psychiatrist. But I'm here to listen. I'm a shoulder. All right. 
All right, we're going to wrap up this episode of Let's Talk Trans, and we're going to do these weekly. So I hope to have something cool to talk about next week. I don't know yet. We'll talk about something now. Uh, in the meantime, in the meantime, between now and then, I want you to do something for you. All right, whether it's schedule an appointment with your doctor to make sure that all your numbers look good, talk to somebody, write yourself a love letter. All right. There's nothing wrong with a little self-love. All right. Take yourself outside. Go for a walk. Maybe, you know, maybe skip the fast food this week. Maybe dine in. Learn how to make something new on the stove. Don't burn yourself. All right. Uh, I'm gonna try salmon this week. I've never tried it before, and I'm told it's very heart healthy. All right. So, until next week, stay true to yourselves. Peace out.